Welcome to the session on stiffness and stiffness metrics in finite element analysis. We can simply demonstrate the term stiffness with the help of a spring force system. Consider a force is applied on a spring and it produces a small elongation or displacement, take it as u. More the force is applied on the spring, you will get more displacement. It is seen that the produced displacement is directly proportional to the applied force that means f is directly proportional to u we can say that f is equal to ku where k is the proportionality constant or stiffness of the spring we can apply the same concept in structural problems also consider a force is applied on a bar having length l and produced a delta l displacement let's check the relation between applied force and the produced displacement by Hooke's law, stress is directly proportional to strain within elastic limit. The proportionality constant is Young's modulus. Rewrite the expression as stress is equal to Young's modulus into strain. We know that stress sigma is force per unit area and strain epsilon is ratio of change in length to original length. So F by A equal to E into delta L by L. We have to find the relation between force and displacement produced. So force F equal to A E into delta L by L or F is equal to A E by L into delta L. Here we can see that the force equal to some constant into displacement produced which is similar to the previous expression that F equal to K into U. This constant a e by l is known as stiffness of this bar and we can see that which depends on the area of cross section of the bar Young's modulus and length of the bar in finite element analysis the member is divided into finite number of elements here we can see a bar loaded at one end this bar is taken as one element with two nodes let's find the stiffness of this bar Assume a displacement u1 produced at node 1 and zero displacement u2 at node 2. Let f1 be the force required to produce u1 displacement, then f1 equal to a e by l into u1. Let f2 be the force required to produce zero displacement u2. To produce zero displacement means f2 should be a reaction and is equal in magnitude and opposite direction of force F1. So F2 equal to minus of F1 which is minus A e by L into U1. Now assume a displacement U2 at node 2 and zero displacement U1 at node 1. Let F2 be the force required to produce U2 displacement then F2 equal to A e by L into U2. Let F1 be the force required to produce zero displacement that is reaction to F2 then F1 equal to minus of F2 which is minus A e by L into U2. Now we have two expressions for both F1 and F2. Let's combine the expressions for finding F1. We will get F1 equal to A e by L into U1 minus U2. And for the force F2, A e by L into minus U1 plus U2. Rewrite these expressions in matrix form. We will get column matrix F1, F2 equal to A e by L, which is a constant, into 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, into the displacement U1, U2, which is in the form of F equal to a constant K into U. So the stiffness K will be A E by L into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. This matrix representation of stiffness is called as stiffness matrix. This matrix form is used in finite element analysis when more number of elements coming into an analysis. Now I am representing the terms A E by L into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 as individual constants or elements of k matrix k11 k12 k21 and k22 let's see the interpretation of each elements 
for unit displacement at each node and zero displacement at other, substitute u1 equal to 1, a unit displacement, and u2 equal to 0 in equation 1. We will get k11 equal to f1 and k21 equal to f2. Similarly, substitute u1 equal to 0 and u2 equal to 1 in equation 1. We will get k12 equal to f1 and k22 equal to f2. Now let's find what does those elements of matrix means. Take any of the elements in the matrix, say k21. We have found that k21 equal to f2. f2 is the force applied at node 2. And we got the value for k21 when a unit displacement given at node 1. You can find those calculations below. We can say that k21 is the force required at node 2 to produce a unit displacement at node 1. In general, kij is the force required at node i to produce a unit displacement at node j. We have gone through the stiffness matrix of individual element. When we divide the member into more number of elements, we will get more stiffness matrices. Combining these stiffness matrix into a single matrix is known as assembling the stiffness matrix. Let's consider a bar of different cross section, different length and different Young's modulus. Dividing this member into two elements, element 1 and element 2. So the stiffness matrix of element 1 will be K1 equal to A1 E1 by L1 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. And the force displacement equation will be F1 F2 equal to K1 minus K1 minus K1 K1 into U1 U2. Because the element 1 is composed of nodes 1 and 2. Stiffness matrix of element 2 will be K2 equal to A2 E2 by L2 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. And the force displacement equation will be the forces F2 F3 equal to K2 minus K2 minus K2 K2 and U2 U3. Because the element 2 is composed of nodes 2 and 3. Let's assemble the individual matrices. First the force matrix F1, F2 and F2, F3. It forms a column matrix of F1, F2 and F3. Next the stiffness matrix K1 minus K1 minus K1, K1 and K2 minus K2 minus K2, K2. The intersection element of two matrices will be K1 plus K2 and the vacant spaces will be 0. Finally, the displacement matrices U1, U2 and U2, U3. It forms a column matrix U1, U2 and U3. And the final assembled matrix will be like this. Let's look at some properties of stiffness matrix. Stiffness matrix is a symmetric matrix as the upper and lower triangular elements are same. Sum of the elements in any column is 0. Let's take the first column. Sum will be k1 plus minus of k1 which is 0. The determinant of the matrix is always 0. Stiffness matrix is always a square matrix. The order of the square matrix will be the number of nodes in the member. In previous example, we took a 3 noted member so the final stiffness matrix will be of 3 by 3 matrix.